Everybody, welcome back to the Iron Oak Sawmill. Not running the mill today, but what we did bring home, and we're going to be running shortly, locusts. We got a call from a uh, potential customer who said, I need something made in locust. I need locust boards. It was actually four by fours. And I said, I don't have any locust logs, but I will try to source one. It wasn't five minutes later. When did that? About five minutes later? Is it five minutes? Yeah, my, uh, my buddy Dave over at the Wood Guy Tree Service text me he goes hey i'm taking out a locust tree today you want it i'm like absolutely <laughs> so here we are this one's about what 11 feet 11 and a half foot long yeah um i'm gonna say it's honey locust i don't know my locusts that well um but anyway the reason i call it honey locust is hang on a second let me see, let me see this whoops not that one see that see that we've been cutting some firewood back here and there's stuff oozing out of there the sap is like honey it's sticky like pine sap and uh it's a mess so i think it's honey locust correct me if i'm wrong okay but as you can see i'm taking a walk around the mill yard today wood miser is in its new home back here just back from a, uh, a mill job and we've got to get that set back up so we can mill this log let me get you turned around all right and this was about what 20 inch diameter we should be able to get this we don't need much out of it and we'll cut the rest into smaller boards and uh, a lot of raised garden folks around here raised planting bed folks so who's meowing at me here what do we got oh one of the new guys this is face Let's see if we can see him why we call him face he just has a really white face there <laughs> we had like one like him a while back we had he had the same name but unfortunately we lost him so this is face too <laughs> Oh, now they're all parading down here. <laughs> they all saw somebody getting petted. They all want to get petted. All right, so what we did get from that job, locusts. Lots of firewood. We've been bucking that up. Yeah, it's already humid this morning, and what is it? Nine o'clock, maybe. Uh, also got uh, sour cherry. There's no bark on it, but trust me, it's sour cherry. You can tell because what bark was on it was too smooth to be regular cherry. And you can see there's no sapwood. That's the thing with sour cherry. Hardly has any sapwood. A lot of the redwood. This is all going to become firewoods. It's not good enough for milling, guys. And uh, sour cherry just doesn't. It's it's nobody's interested in it other than firewood. It still makes a great cherry firewood. People still use it for smoking. We need some dry wood for the shed, which is almost full. We got a row and a quarter to go, and we're done filling our shed. And the rest of this is going to get split and stacked back here. The one thing I realize is we've never given you guys a tour of the lumber yard slash, uh, now, firewood yard, wood yard, <laughs> what do you order to call it, lining up at the mill. Remember that uh, white oak that had all the metal in it? That's what's left of it. I'm going to be bucking that up. Got a chunk of hard maple here. That's going to be heading for firewood, unfortunately. But we did get a, where's this hard maple log? Oh, they're over in the log yard. Okay. <laughs> uh, so EC Maid's getting ready to go. We do have to do some uh, service on this. Scheduled maintenance. We have to retorque these bolts for the push plate. And I think that's it, right? And grease it. And grease it like check you do every time. And check the oil every time. A little bit of the white oak we did. Uh, that had all the metal in it. It's overflow. We don't want to put it in the front of this. Because this we need dry stuff in this side. We're going to be using this uh, this coming winter. So we need that to be all dry stuff. The other side is way too wet. And that's going to have next year to dry out. So... That'll be ready to go the following year. Over here is our stack of pallets and a little bit of overflow of what is this? White or what is white oak? That's white oak. Yeah, white white oak. Um, we cut these. What were we cutting? Beams. Uh, and we no. had some. Those are supposed to be. More no, but we were cutting beams and we got yes. these for the Sorry. beams. Okay. Uh, what's under this one? Hickory. All right, under this one, hickory. This we're using for the kitchen cabinet doors. I'm gonna use these wide ones for the panels in the door, the raised panels in the doors. So this one we're saving for ourselves. Over on this pallet, we sorted this out uh, last week or week before. Yep. This is what's left of our quarter sawn red oak that was on the pallet behind it. And uh, that is up for sale. Beautiful quarter sawn. We've got some boards. We had some boards as wide as 12 inches wide in here. There, I think there's a few left, but some beautiful stuff. Let's see if we can get a little closer. And pick up some of the ray fleck in that. Oh, yeah. There you go. Beautiful stuff, though. Okay, next skid over. 
This is a huge stack of five quarter ash. Don't know how many board feet are in here, but this stuff is approaching three years drying. Uh, we've actually had some people buying a few pieces off of this one for some projects, as well as another stack of ash we've got. All right, our next stack over from the ash, we've got box elder turning blanks, some thicker box elder slabs. This stuff is really nice. There's a lot of red flame in this. If you look back in our videos, you'll see where we sliced a bunch of this up from the same tree. And this stuff turned out great. I mean, these could be used for, I could block them up and use them for uh, platter blanks, shallow bowl blanks for the lathe, uh, all kinds of good stuff. But that's some pretty wood right there. Here is some really highly figured maple off of, uh, if you look back in our videos, it's uh, most figure ever on the mill or something like that. That was a, uh, those great big maple slabs we got done at an offsite mill, but this is another log off of that that got a little hacked up, but we saved what we could out of it because there was some really nicely figured maple in this. All right. Our next pallet and a must on every sawmill right here. Hundreds of stickers, stacked and dried, and uh, ready to use on our next uh, lumber stacking job. Uh, let me see. Let's let's go over this way. These are fairly new. I don't know if any these ever showed up on the uh, on the channel or not. That's... All right, we got the. Well, you guys did see this, at least part of this. These are some of the uh, American chestnut slabs we cut. We cut some five quarter thinner slabs with this one here. This was the thicker stuff. I think you guys might have seen this one. And then this was a spruce log that was just loaded with knots. So we slabbed this out. Some guys looking for some less expensive bar tops said, hey, you know, can you do you ever have any kind of pine or spruce or something like that? Well, now we do. So that's drying, getting ready to go. Next one over, a couple of our favorites here. If you look back in the channel far enough, you'll know what this is. This is the Catalpa Pearl. This was sliced at what, two and a quarter? It's like two and a quarter. Unfortunately, a lot of these are hollow. They're beautiful wood. What's left behind is beautiful, and this would be excellent for epoxy. And, and like I said, look back in the videos. You'll see the Catalpa Burl when it's getting restacked and cleaned up. Here's that maple, highly figured maple that we have hiding under there. The other end is about five feet wide. These are about seven feet long and highly figured. Most amazing grain on the mill is the name of that video if you want to see what they look like. All right, our next stack back, we've got just this single log. We had this one cut off site as well. This is a butternut or white walnut. That's a really nice grain in that one. And I think we did this one. Did we do a feature on this one or no? I don't know if we did. But we originally thought this was black walnut. I don't know why we thought it was black walnut. We knew it was a walnut tree, but but it's butternut. Nice looking stuff. Moving on to the next one. What do we got here? This is English walnut. Now I know you guys seen this stuff. We've got this is the pink English walnut. And the curly English walnut we did on the on the mill. This is some beautiful stuff right here. We did this here. Some nice looking stuff. Here's our box elder slabs and those bigger box elder trees. These things were what, they're 10 feet long, 8, 10 feet long. And again, if you look back, uh, this log exploded on the mill is, uh, with color. <laughs> That's what the title of that video is. Here is uh, the top one here we did on our mill, I believe. We did both of these on our mill, I think. Didn't we? Yes, we did. We did both of these on our mill. These are both uh, nice size black walnuts. Uh, again, check it out. Go back a few videos. It's the uh, largest black walnut slabs on the mill or something like that. But you can check out the grain and add some nice stuff. Here's a couple we had all done off site. This is a very large ash crotch, which apparently had a little bit of stress in it there. And then that big, huge black walnut. This is the end. If you look at the video, Black Walnut Beauty, this is the end of that. This is the upper half of that. Uh, this one had an insulator in it. And uh, we were able to salvage what we could out of the bottom of it. It was the very last cut he made. Um, when he knew he had an insulator, he just stopped and put the, set the log aside. But thankfully, it was on the last cut, and uh, we were able to get all the other slabs out of it. Nice, though, beautiful stuff. And again, I think you'll see that on the channel as well. All right, coming over from our last stack over there, the uh, black walnut and the ash, 
over to this one we've got smaller black walnut we did here these are at least a couple years old i think yeah. two maybe coming up on three years old but we've got black walnut ash black walnut and black walnut just some nice figured stuff for for uh bench tops for coffee tables whatnot all right so deb corrected me these were actually cut two years ago exactly almost august of 2019 2019 deb yep. all right but uh they're ready to go these were all cut a two inch thick so and ash is dry yesterday so <laughs> ash is dry the day before you cut it that's how dry that stuff is no i'm kidding you do have to let it dry down but uh these are ready to go all right our next pallet over big stack of uh five quarter ash this is probably one of the videos i think my daughter was helping to bring this stuff back and stack this uh so this again is probably two years old yeah. and uh definitely ready to sell or use however you want to do it um we used qu quite a bit of this we yeah we used quite a bit of this in the kitchen yeah. we have an ash accent wall beautiful i don't know if we showed you guys that you'll see it that's where we're going to do our live uh, our live stream from for our uh 25,000 subscriber giveaway. We just passed 24,000, so we're getting closer, folks. Plus, we owe you a 20,000 subscriber video, so we're going to double up, double up. <laughs> we're going to double up this coming up. So, All right, this pallet here, we did not mill this, but we did salvage this from a local mill. You may have seen us talk about it in a previous video. This is old growth heart pine. These are three by sixes or three by eights. Got some nails in there, and there's a taper on the edge, so it makes it look thinner. But these are three by sixes or three by eight, and uh, old growth hard pine. Uh, the growth rings on this are super tiny, uh, and it is heavy as oak. And when you when you burn it, it just, the sap cooks out of it. It just bubbles out at the ends, so it smells like turpentine also when you cut it. So that's one good hint that it is old growth hard pine, old growth dug fir. All these boards here. Back in the day, they didn't tongue and groove. They grooved, and then they put a tenon in there like this. And that's how they did tongue and groove. But these were stall boards for, uh, to keep some bulls that were used at a local mill for hauling, or oxen, for hauling the wagons. So you needed some strong boards, but they were also lightweight. And uh, we were able to salvage these Thankfully, they didn't end up in the dump or a burn pile. But we will eventually find a use for these. But old growth hard pine, look that up, guys. You can't get this stuff anymore. We were glad to salvage this. Again, saving it from the burn pile. Here is our only stack of catwood. It's milly catwood. Highly rare stuff. So if you want any, you're going to have to let us know. <laughs> Actually... This is, let me zoom back here, sorry guys. There we go. That is Millie, who we thought we lost. She disappeared for about a day and a half, two days, which is not like her. There she is, sound asleep. So we're not going to disturb her, but we're going to take a peek under the tarp here at the end. And this is more, this is where we sorted out that five quarter, quarter sawn stuff. Cut in seven of 19. This is two years old, and we've been uh, some folks have been using this for some projects, sending us some pictures of the work they've done. It's beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff as a jet passes overhead. <laughs> Sounds like a Lear. The airport in Allentown sometimes they use this approach. Next pallet back a lot of four quarter red oak. Came from one of our red oak videos, guys. <laughs> Can't remember. This stuff is two years plus two years old plus That's this true. this is ready definitely ready to go ready to be used nice stuff we've got boards up to looks like about 12 13 14 inches wide in there um nice and flat as you can see we've got them all strapped down there's probably five or six straps down along this edge and uh the two by fours across the top help keep the downward pressure and keep the boards nice and flat some will cup no matter what wood is going to do what it's going to do but we managed to keep this stuff nice and flat. It's not moldy. It's not messed up. There's not bugs in it. And it's looking good. So projects for this. We need them. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. I think we're finally getting to some more slabs back here. Yeah. Yep. Let's get back here and check it out. This under here. 
this is a uh, turning blanks uh, burls figured maple things like that and uh, I think we have do we have any of our chestnut in there I don't think we do Ma mostly maple and black no. walnut uh, figured maple maple burls and black walnut burls lots of them in here and we come up to the corner of the property where we come up with my uh, grandson and we religiously put a feed block up here for the deer. This is a mineral lick, and we the feed block's gone. They usually they don't take long to devour that. But the deer come down here every afternoon and uh, have a little snack. Okay, tuck back here in the corner, and this stuff's been drying for about two years at least. This is going to be some nice looking stuff. Over in here, we've got. This came off the black walnut tree, or is this English walnut? This is English walnut, a small piece here on the top. Below that is burled walnut. This this is a walnut tree. Fell over in a friend's yard. He said, come get it. Leave me some firewood. We pulled a mountain of burls out of there. And then some black walnut burled logs, the best we could get. The tree was not in the best of shape, but these would be great for epoxy projects as well. Or just all alone, standalone stuff. There's... Some really nice ones in here. Sorry, it's hard to see. Can't get this tarp pulled back. It's all staked into the ground. But as you can see, the way we tarp these, they're very loose. They get plenty of airflow through here. We don't have any problems with wood molding. Then here in the back row, this is one of our longer slabs here. It's about nine feet long. It's a hickory. It's a nasty knotted up hickory log that we uh, sliced into two inch, two and a quarter inch slabs, looks like. I'd say two and a quarter. That's and, nice. uh, that one's ready to go too. We actually sold some of those who we were making bar tops out of them. Hickory's kind of a tough, tough one to work with. Man, we gotta do some weed eating back here too. <laughs> I haven't been back here in so long. <laughs> Woo, look at that. This stuff's like a foot and a half high. It's up to my knees. And we got this big old collection of stuff here. What we have back here in the corner. And Deb is good at marking everything, what it is and uh, what it is and when it was cut. This English walnut back here. Next one up is, what is that, maple? That's a hard maple. No, I think this one. Yeah, that's maple. Okay. And then another English walnut here. Hickory above that. You can always tell, hickory gets these black spots around on it. And these are all sealed with anchor seal. Everything in here is sealed with anchor seal on the ends. Um, but hickory develops this kind of a, almost like a black moldy ring, but it's not mold. I don't know what it is. Sap, whatever. We've got uh, red oak here. Just some good sides, about six six feet long, and then of course we have to flat side some of it. For the most part, there's live edge down through there. Again, another piece of hard maple. That one's pretty long. That's about nine feet long as well, you know, going all the way down to the other end. Yeah, and like I said, again, plenty of airflow under here, guys. So nothing's getting moldy. What's up top? Pin oak. Yes. Pin oak there. Pin oak again, and you can see, even when they're strapped, sometimes wood does what it's going to do. That center one got a, that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's just outside the pith. So those two right there are going to cup. What you do with those, sorry about that, split those in half. And then here on the end, some soft maple and white oak. A couple of small white oaks there on the top. Good amount of stuff. I think this is the last of it, isn't it? Yeah, this is it. This is it. We've got just a couple of ash slabs, small ash slabs left from that stack there on the bottom. And this is the only stuff we've been able to get for red elm. Although, we no, we have another elm log over there in the, in the log yard. Oh, cool. But this was sliced, <laughs> man, three years ago? Four years ago? Well, you don't well. find many big elm trees around here, unfortunately. Most of them are gone. Pretty. Dutch elm disease got him. It says red elm or slippery elm. This has been around a while. It's been picked through, and I don't know if I want to sell any more of this. I've got some projects for it. So, got some shorter, shorter top shorter pieces ones. here, some shorter pieces there, and a couple of long ones left out of this. And I think I'm going to use that next one down. One of these had a, a spot where we had to cut a, an insulator out of it. I think it's the next one, but. Red elm. I don't. Did we have a video up on the elm? I don't think we did. Nope. No, I don't think we did. I don't think so. It's pretty stuff, though, folks. Pretty green. You don't hear anything about it, but it's it's when it gets 
it's like a lightly colored, I would say a lightly colored walnut when it comes down to this beautiful stuff. Red elm, slippery elm. It's called slippery elm because right under the bark is like a sub bark from what I was told that is just like grease. <laughs> you try to pull, move a piece, you slide off of it and everything else. And uh, apparently that under bark or whatever you want to call it, sub bark, if you peel that, it's great for making baskets. And I didn't know that and everything got peeled off and put in the burn pile. So live and learn on that one. If I ever get a chance to get any more of that, I'll try saving that stuff. Well, that's it. That's pretty much everything we've got here in, in the uh, lumber yard. And, uh, but we will be adding to it. Of course, we've got some empty pallets over here. This one here, we've got this one empty, ready to go. This is where we stacked all that. Remember the poplar video where we showed stacking the sticker ring? Boom, gone. We had that stacked up. What was it? 20 layers high? 20 layers high. Gone. People are like, we need it. We need it now. Uh, we can hang it wet. It's not a problem. And that's what they did. I'm listening. Is that the wind or is it starting to rain? I hope. hope it doesn't rain. <laughs> Got too much to do today. But let's get over here. We get back to blocking. Not that. We're not going to block that up. That's Deb. We don't block her up. <laughs> We're going to block up firewood. we got to get this stuff cleaned up out of the yard. And uh, get it ready to split on the Easton Maid 1222. All right. So let's get, uh, get our safety going and get to bucking. to let you know we had a customer not too long ago not with their chops let me get a little closer to this one so you can hear me we had a customer who uh wanted us to mill up some stuff for him which we did and uh, they were out cleaning up a down tree chaps were hanging on the wall in the in the uh barn but they didn't bother to get them well let me show you the results of that
this is what we had left for little cookie pieces, blocking, whatever. Uh, just chunks of uh, stuff that's not real good for the splitter. <laughs> like that one. That's like, I don't know, not going through my splitter. How about that? <laughs> A couple pieces of ash. I got to get these to length. They're fine. I just throw them up there to get them bucked. But this will go for boiler wood. That's for the guys for the outside, outside boilers. They could toss in whatever. And they'll like this because it's locust. Burns nice and hot. Burns for a long time. Good stuff. And that's what we got blocked up. I don't know. Half cord, roughly. A couple pieces still on the ground. A couple more back here. But that is it. Save that splitting for another day, guys. Everybody, we'll wrap it up here at the Iron Oak Sawmill. No milling today. Firewood, and hey, at least we got to look at the at the lumber yard to see what's out there. We never showed you guys that. I, I didn't even realize that, but there's a lot of good stuff out there. We got a lot of projects ahead of us, and uh, hopefully, some other folks will be picking up some project wood here as well. Um, almost a full cord of locusts. What would you say, full cord? Yeah. I think we're pretty close to a full cord of locusts bucked so. up, ready to go. Uh, I mean, once it's split, it might be a little bit less. Uh, either way. Some hard work in today's heat. I think it's like what 90 out here or something like that. Humidity is is killer. I'm soaked. So, and we are late for lunch. It's 2:30. 2:30. Yeah. 2:30. 2:45. Yeah. So we got to hit. We got to get in the house, get cooled down, get hydrated, and uh, I don't know. We'll be heading out to the next one. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions about what we're doing here on a sawmill, on the splitter, bucking firewood, uh, or anything like that, uh, let us know down in the comments section. Be glad to help you out. And as always, thanks everybody for stopping out. We'll see you at our next time. Take care.